ask me what I do. I tell them I'm a sign language interpreter that specializes in music interpreting. This is usually met with blank stares and the question, but why? Deaf people can't hear music, or can they? There have been multiple studies involving deaf people's experience with music. And those studies have found that when deaf people feel the music, it interacts with the auditory cortex. And all people, other studies have found that, that with all people, hearing or deaf, that there's a chemical reaction that occurs. See, what happens is once the auditory cortex is engaged, it then engages with other parts of the brain to raise dopamine and lower cortisol. How freaking cool is that? Your brain on music, kids. <laughs> music is also really important to me because it connects me to the most important people in my life, as well as important experiences. Johnny Cash comes on and I think about my grandpa. The Judds are played, and I think about my aunt and my grandma driving me to the coast on our summer vacations. Depeche Mode comes on, and it's my brother forcing me to listen to New Wave. And then that moment, at age 11, when I saw her, her voice still resonates with me today. She embodied power and independence that would forever inspire me. This cassette tape, yes, that dates me, was titled, All Hell the Queen, Latifa, that is. <laughs> I came from a broken home with a revolving door of stepfathers, so I escaped as much as I could to my friends' homes. My friends became my family, and during that time, it was the most formative part of my life. I learned about African-American and Latino cultures, and I learned to love and respect them. And in the same time, they loved and respected me. But in my own home, those same friends were rejected simply because they had a different color skin. So that meant I was rejected too. I started using drugs. I rebelled. I started hanging out with gang members. Eventually, I got kicked out. I had to quit school, and I ended up being homeless. But music, has always been my refuge. And I can't imagine a life without music. And I'm passionate about bringing that experience to everyone. At the age of 20, I became hearing. It wasn't that I was previously deaf. This was the first time that I had total immersion into the deaf world and I gained my new label. So those of you who are hearing would be labeled a hearing person. And those of you that have hearing loss would be called either deaf or hard of hearing, depending on the cultural and linguistic ramifications. I was welcomed into this amazing world, introduced to incredible people, language, and culture. Since I was a child, there were deaf people coming in and out of my life. In hindsight, I now see that my purpose was revealing itself. I lived and breathed as a visitor in this cultural and linguistic minority until a bout of spinal meningitis sent me on my path to hearing loss. Then that shifted my perspective, as well as my fight for access and my own label changes, even though I didn't always want to accept it. I remember seeing music for the first time. Two interpreters were interpreting a concert. It looked a lot like a city council meeting. You know how fun those are. <laughs> it looked a lot about like this. I thought, what was that? This is the sign for music, but that wasn't music. I didn't see music off of their hands, 
By this time I was married and I felt my deaf spouse and my deaf friends weren't experiencing everything that I was and they were being cheated from this. See, artists take each melody and each harmony and then they merge it with the lyrics because music is so much more than lyrics. But then I saw it. A deaf dance troupe called the Wild Zappers. They brought life into music. Every hair on the back of my hair stood up when they performed with the San Antonio Deaf Dance Company. And I said, this, this is what music should look like. So it's interesting when hearing people tell me all the time that deaf people don't like music and that they have nothing to do with music. I adamantly disagree and I tell them, music is for all humanity and it doesn't discriminate. I soon realized that it was hearing people making these blanket statements about deaf people. And I thought, how can a hearing person decide what truly constitutes access for a person with hearing loss? And the answer is, you can't. So deaf and hard of hearing people have to fight for their basic right to communication in every aspect of their life. How many of you in this room can raise your hand and say that you have fought for your basic right to communication? In doing my part, I have studied ASL extensively, American Sign Language, as well as I've elicited help from deaf community members to take this 200 year old language and take parts of it to make music visual. So now I'm going to show you when I choose to show all of the different instruments when Madame Gandhi created her song, The Future is Female. would you want? The city council meeting or this one? <laughs> Just because you want it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it. See, deaf people fight for access in very personal places in their lives. Doctor's offices, counseling sessions, parent-teacher meetings. They also ask for very specific interpreters by name because they live and breathe in their own community and they know and trust specific interpreters. But sadly, that decision typically falls on a hearing person who has absolutely no connection to the deaf world. We saw this happen in the emergency broadcast from a Florida news station right before Hurricane Irma hit. See, they picked an unqualified signer I won't even say interpreter. And they signed, instead of life-saving information, they signed things like pizza, bear monster, and other incomprehensible information. So the deaf person's voice was silenced in this decision, even when it comes to life and death situations. I fight really hard in the entertainment world because that's where we get to break away from the doldrums and the, all of the struggles and trials and tribulations of our life to enter a world of entertainment. So if you were to buy a ticket to go to a concert, right? You would just go. But if you had to call the venue and several weeks you keep calling and calling and you're trying to get a hold of someone just to ask for access and finally you get a hold of someone for access and then they tell you, I'm sorry, you have the wrong person. Let me give you another person. And then you wait weeks and weeks to hear from that person. Finally, you get a hold of that person. That person says, oh, I'm sorry, we don't do this. Or don't you have a kid that can sign it for you? Or I'm sorry, you should have contacted us weeks ago. 
would you still be motivated to purchase the ticket? As a member of the cultural and linguistic minority, I have seen the trials and tribulations of discrimination as a mother, as a wife, as a sister, as a friend, and as an interpreter. See, this discrimination starts early on and in unintentional ways. Did you know that 90% of deaf people are born to hearing parents? And this is what's really shocking. 15, that's one five percent of hearing parents, and typically it's the mom, communicate in sign language to them. But instead, we tell these deaf children and deaf people to conform to our hearing society because it's the hearing world that's deemed to be normal. Yet, there's tons of sign language curriculum teaching your hearing babies sign language. But research has shown that deaf babies and hearing babies both will benefit from early sign language acquisition. But when it comes to deaf babies, parents are told to opt for cochlear implants and to speak only. Even though research shows that early sign language input can compensate for the lack of auditory input. So the hard of hearing like myself and deaf people have different signing accents, much like spoken ones. Some of us talk with our voice, some of us do not. Some of us use sign language, some of us do not. None of them are better than the other, just as no spoken language is better than another. Yet those with hearing losses face way many more barriers to communication. My access to communication may look very different than your access to communication. So please be willing to ask us, hear us. I wanna see a limitless world where 70% of our deaf community is no longer unemployed because of their hearing loss. I wanna see where we create spaces for everyone to feel welcome. I would love to see us realize that everyone is born with, the, with all different kinds of abilities and not disabilities. So now that you know this, would you want to be silenced? <laughs>